Leonardo da Vinci. I think we all know him pretty well. Most people know him as an artist. His most famous painting everybody knows of, the Mona Lisa. Even though he was a really good painter, let's put that aside. He was a master engineer, and some people even call him a scientist. A lot of scientists also believe that we have to refer to Da Vinci as a scientist rather than an artist or painter. There has been 7,000 pages of information found that belong to Leonardo Da Vinci, and there could have been way more. Because when Da Vinci was alive, Europe was very religious, and anything that was not religious would get burned or destroyed, and the writer of the article would be in prison. At that time, the European language was Latin, but Da Vinci did not know Latin, and all of his work and writings was done in Italian. Because he couldn't understand Latin, he wasn't very famous when he was alive, and they didn't know him like we know him today. In the year 1452, Leonardo was born in Vinci, Italy. Da Vinci means from Vinci, so if you translate his name, is Leonardo from Vinci. It's kind of like Zaccaria Razi, which means Zaccaria from Ray. When Da Vinci quit school, he didn't learn much, he just knew how to read and write. But back then, they didn't promote learning any new things like sciences. They say as long as you can read and write, you're good to go, and you don't need to learn anything extra. Da Vinci was one of those people at that time that said, why shouldn't we learn more? Back then in the Middle East, the knowledge of science was hundreds of years ahead of Europe, and Da Vinci believed that they have to reach their levels as well. In Da Vinci's first writings it says, Before I do anything or write anything, I have to run an experiment, and until I'm not sure, I won't write about it. Right now, that seems very simple and understandable, but back then, it was extremely shocking. It basically spoke against religion. One of the most famous experiments he would run is experimenting on birds, and he wanted to figure out how birds actually fly. And if a creature can fly, why can't us humans fly? Da Vinci was so dedicated that he wrote a book on flying that had 35,000 words in it, and over 500 sketches of different designs to fly. It's good to know that in these designs, there was a type of parachute that let you fly. At that time he said, you could use the force of wind to hold yourself up and glide down slowly. This design was in people's head for hundreds of years, but they actually believed that it will never work. But that same design, centuries later, came to a reality. And right now we have the most modern one. At that time he figured out that when a bird is flying, that underneath their wings, the pressure of the air is a lot higher underneath their wings than on top. And this idea was used to fly the first airplane. He would even design different types of bridge. Bridges that could not be built at that time, but he would still design them, and he didn't have modern tools to build it. All of Da Vinci's design was pretty much ahead of its time. Either like the parachute, they never thought about it, or it was designs that it came out very expensive and they would never execute it. He was so obsessed with science that he would ask people around him to give your dead ones to me and I can run experiments and figure out how they died. Most of them didn't give the body, but throughout his life, he worked on 30 dead bodies, and he did all types of experiments on those bodies. He would draw the body parts that he would find out, and back then, they had no idea how like, for example, bones look like. 
He even has writings on how the heart actually works, and they would make fun of him back then. By injecting different liquids through the heart, he would notice how the blood works throughout the heart, and he actually wrote it out. And eventually, in the 20th century, they realized that Da Vinci was right all along. Back then, he realized that some deaths were happening because of the heart. He basically discovered a heart attack. There's a buildup in the vein, and the blood can't pass through. You might ask, how did all of these writings survive, and how were they found? I have to say that most of the writings and paintings of Da Vinci was found in England and France. And a lot of historical things around the world is found in these two countries. His most famous painting is in Paris as well. But it was painted in Italy. They were smart and they bought it. They didn't buy it from Da Vinci, he didn't sell it. But throughout the years, the people that got a hold of it would sell it to different collectors. And the collectors realized how insanely valuable it is. An interesting fact about Da Vinci is that when he learned to read and write and quit school, he learned nothing else from anyone. He was basically self-taught in everything. Painting, the human body, different designs for flying, or different types of equipment. He was really ahead of his time. In one of his writings, he says that music is connected to the soul and it's kind of an art form for the ears. This is a time where there's not a cool or real instrument and music was very rare to hear. As you know, Da Vinci was a sculptor as well. One of the sculptures he makes is a giant horse. The statue was 25 feet and he was working on it for 17 years. But when the French army invaded Italy in the year 1499, they destroyed the sculpture and that was when Da Vinci was still alive and he witnessed it. If you've seen our video about using 100% of our brain, Da Vinci is a good example for that. He basically built his brain one step at a time and whatever task he tackled, he became a genius at it. And that's at that time. So if you want it, you'll do it.